I've, I've been told that I'm supposed to stay here. You are supposed to stay here, yeah. Let's see, how to, how to approach this, Karen. As I, as I mentioned earlier, um, Karen has been our CEO for um, 13 years. 13 years, that's, that's a long time. If you think back, you know, where you were 13 years ago, a lot of things have changed since then. And a lot of things have changed for our society. It, it's grown a lot. Throughout those, throughout the, the time, um, and much of that time at least, I've had the privilege, because um, I was president for a few years, and president-elect before that, and the scientific program chair before that, and on the board before that, and um, then I was probably five years old before that. But, um, <laughs> so I, I've gotten to work with Karen up for a long time, and that has really been a privilege, and to see how she works. And we work together very diligently, um, she can be quite the taskmaster, and I'm sure if I could see beyond these lights, I'd see staff and, and ex-past presidents nodding their head, yeah, that she can be quite the taskmaster. But, um, but there is always time for a chat about other things uh, beyond the, the society to kind of recognize what was going on in the world, the good and the bad, and to um, have a laugh. And so I always appreciated that, and it always made my, my work fun. And of course, not everyone is so lucky to have worked with her directly that way, but um, I can tell you if it's not clear from what you see around you tonight, and whether this is your first time or whether you've been coming and, and growing with the society and learning and laughing for um, many years, um, much of that is because of Karen's efforts in the last 13 years. So if you're here tonight, um, certainly recognize that and appreciate that. Um, Karen likes you know, pretty much everybody, and there are a few exceptions, but I don't think we should get into names. But, um, but I, I think it is safe to say that um, one of her favorite people is an ex-ASTMH president and kind of our poet laureate, Chandy John. Um, Chandy, could you come to the stage? Chandy, if you recall, um, a few years back, his, his presidential address was uh, a series of beautiful poems, and he's quite talented that way. And he has kindly offered a, uh, to pen something in Karen's honor, so I'll give the mic to Chandy. Thank you, Dan. Um, it's uh, such a privilege to honor our wonderful, beautiful Karen. Any of you know who Karen who know Karen at all, know that she does not like to be in the spotlight. So when I was thinking of this poem, I was trying to think of ways to honor her in which she would feel honored. And I f decided to focus on an aspect uh, that is very, very dear to her and that has been a tremendous gift from her to our society. Um, and I was kind of pleased that coincidentally or not, it ties in really well with a wonderful address from Ambassador in Kengasan and the a Communications Award. So the poem is called Advocate. Cleaved leukocyte, shooting for the moon. Stealthy virus, hijacking a duped cell. Fanged worm, questing for your blood. We see things hidden from the angels. We see them in the man with the cantaloupe jaw, the woman sputtering out each brittle word, the boy pale as diluted sand. And we know it is so very possible to halt this march to death. Think of the truths you hold closest to your heart. This, 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 this. Every indelible fragment. Who knows them if you hide them in your room? The cardinal argues for spring, for the delicacy of all we would destroy. Learn from the cardinal. Advocate. So it's kind of fragile to pass, but um, we, ha we have this uh, gift for you, Karen. Oh, thank and, you. Um, so Because it's, right? yeah, right? yeah, it's not connected, right? Yeah, okay. it's not connected. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll place it here back, and you can get it later. But okay. congratulations for, for all you do, and um, we'll give you a, a moment to say a few words. OK, thank you. <clears throat> all right.
This is one time I am really glad I can't see anybody. <laughs> and I am not going to put my hand up here to try to see anybody because I won't be able to get through what I'm going to say. So thank you, Dan. I can hardly believe it's 13 years. It's been an honor to both serve and lead this society. I think back to my final interview that included Ed Ryan, who was president at the time, and Peter Hotez, who was incoming president. Thank you, Ed, for your decision-making skills, your wise decision-making skills, because you hired me. <laughs> what drew me to ASTMH? First, I'm a science groupie. I already knew of ASTMH and was fascinated by the science. I saw a society with a stellar scientific reputation made up of caring and inquisitive men and so many women. So many women. <clears throat> From around the world, all working to find answers to diseases that in large part impact those who too often have no voice, no vote, and sometimes no recognition as a human being. The more I learned about this society, the more I wanted to be a part of it. You can see I drank the Kool-Aid from day one. This is my license plate on my car. And I was shocked to find out that it wasn't already taken. With the society's foundation of solid science, I knew I could do a few things to elevate ASTMH. But I didn't, and I couldn't do it alone. Building and maintaining a world-class team is something I knew how to do. I and everyone here is fortunate to have this top-notch staff team. Names you know like Judy and Buffy, Buffy, <laughs> and more that, you d that, more that you don't, but I do, and every board member does, and so has every president and every board member that I have ever worked with. Together, through thick and thin, we have pulled in the same direction. I've learned about helminths, flaviviruses, the malaria parasite hiding in the liver. You don't think I could really not say something about malaria, right? <laughs> about female genital schistosomiasis, the worrisome lack of parasitology in medical school curriculums, the tie between human and animal health, that hygiene needs a major public relations campaign, and how poverty is a striking constant through much of the diseases that bring us all here today. Thank you for everything you've given me. Several times a week, I drive past a children's academy in Alexandria, Virginia, where I live. Painted on this building are quotes from inspirational leaders like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Congressman John Lewis, and this from Amanda Gorman. For there is always light if we're brave enough to see it, if we're only brave enough to be it. As I said at the beginning, it's been an honor. I've been a caretaker and an enabler of this light. You and the society are this light. ASTMH's best days are ahead, especially under the coming tenure of my friend and colleague, Jamie Benishi, in whom I have the greatest confidence. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.